Hi, I'm Jamie Joshua. And I'm Gina Wright. And I'm Josh Wright. And we're Amy's family. And you're listening to Chasing Dreams with Amy J. Welcome to Chasing Dreams podcast with Amy J. Amy believes that realizing a life without regrets is achieved by taking chances, chasing your dreams, making moves, and overcoming your doubts. The Chasing Dreams podcast will help you overcome life's obstacles, believe in your potential, and inspire you to face your fears. And now here's the woman who is passionately pursuing her dreams, Amy J. Hey, Dream Chasers. This is Amy J. And thank you so much for tuning in to episode 150. That's right, guys. We did it. We're here. Episode 150. Five zero. Woo! I got to tell you guys, feels like just yesterday we began and already we're at episode 150. My mind is blown by that statistic, by that sheer number. And I mean, we, we did it because I would not be here alone if it weren't for you dream chasers and sharing your story, the listeners being inspired by these honest tellings of stories. And so I am eternally grateful for you all and know that this is just the beginning. Okay. We are nowhere near the end. We're going to keep on going as long as I can keep on going. All right. So this milestone episode is brought to you by our Patreon campaign supporters. Thanks to all of you for your support. For more information on our Patreon campaign and or if you'd like to donate, even just a dollar a month goes a long way to help keep the show going. You can learn more at amyj21.com slash Patreon. So guys, for this episode, I decided to give you a peek into my family. I have gotten and pulled from the corners of the world, my siblings. Gina, Josh, Jamie, they are on the show. You met some of them before. Some you haven't. Today's the day that you can meet them all together. And we had a blast talking about what they're doing now, their dreams, their passions, and what they're listening to as well. And so let me stop talking so you can listen. Okay, so here it is. Hey, Dream Chasers, this is Amy J. And thank you so much for tuning in to episode 150 of Chasing Dreams. That's right, guys. We have hit the milestone. 50 episodes from the last 100. 150 episodes since it began. and. You know, I was trying to figure out how should I mark this episode? What should I do? And I thought I would bring it back to the people that keep me grounded with my family. Now, you already met my mom. You've met my younger sister. You kind of met my twin, Jamie, but she was just answering questions. She didn't really, she wasn't on the other end of it, although we still need to make that happen. And you haven't met my brother, Josh. So we're going to have to, I decided to bring them on. They said yes. So they are here today and we're just going to chat. We're going to talk about what we've seen, what we've done, uh, and what, what we, what people should be doing. So let's, let's just kind of get on with it. Don't you think Every, everybody's on roll call? Jamie, Gina, Josh. All right, guys. So now you can distinguish the voices. Okay. You probably could from the intro, but you can do it from there too. Guys, when I started all of this, did you think we would get to 150 episodes? Yes. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> Jamie? Absolutely. I, You've always been motivated. I think we were just thinking, well, I was just thinking one episode at a time, and then suddenly you're at fifty and then at a hundred, and now one fifty is an awesome achievement. Congratulations, Amy. Thank you. Now, Josh, for you, it's a little different, right? Because you haven't known me from the beginning. And when we first knew each other, I, I had been podcasting, but was it a surprise to you for this to reach 150? No, I don't think so. Because I'm trying to think what episode you were on when I started, when, well, when we first met. Uh, what was it, it was, around? I think it was around the 70s. Was it? I think it was even before that, to be honest. But I mean, you were still really into it and you were still developing the brand and everything. So it's been kind of fun to sit and watch it uh, continue to grow and develop. And I don't know, it just seems to be taking off. What's fun is the conversations I have with people, especially... Those who didn't know me when I first started, I mean, Josh, you and I have had conversations about 
what could be done with the podcast, what kind of things people haven't done. And, you know, did you know about podcasts before we met? I did, but it was more just you know, listening to different NPR podcasts or cooking channels, things like that. Um, the more individual podcasts I hadn't really gotten into. And now today, do you listen to more podcasts? Uh, when I have time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a good point. Yeah, it seems to be getting in short supply uh, lately. But, you know, it's still good to take time and just, I don't know, reach out, learn new things. So for podcasting, because all of you have listened to a podcast at any point in time outside of chasing dreams of course wink wink nudge nudge but for each of you can we talk about what podcast you're listening to today that interests you outside again of chasing dreams one of the ones i'm listening to it's called at home with and it's by these two girls from the uk they're they're bloggers their names are anna newton and lily pebbles and the basic premise uh just to be really quick is that they go to different uh, business, I guess, female females who have had large businesses and they go to their homes and interview them at their homes while uh, understanding how they built their homes and their, their inspiration behind their interior design, but at the same time learning about how they started their businesses and their influences. So it's pretty motivating. Uh, I like hearing it because it's, it is from a, a good perspective of, of entrepreneurs, uh, but also I like the home aspect. Um, and you can see photos of the people's homes as well on another app, which I don't know at the top of my head right now, but it's pretty nice. Very cool. I am listening to The Read, and I really enjoy them. Um, it's by Crystal and Kid Fury, who basically take on what's happening in the world. Um, very urban flavored, but it's really, really good. And uh, another one is a friend of mine, a coworker, uh, Cornell Woodson, has a diversity um, podcast called Let's Unpack That, really touching on issues of um, what's happening, pride, um, what words mean. So I'm really proud of him for that. And that's a really great podcast if anyone's looking for something to watch, or, I mean, listen to. And then uh, I like Soap operas, so Daytime Confidential is a great way to stay on top of my soaps. Thank you, Jamie, for providing that one podcast that you are listening to. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Above yeah. and beyond. Directions, directions. Josh, you can go either the way of Gina or Jamie. You know, what are you listening to? Well, there's really <laughs> a variety to it. I mean, you know, there's one I love, uh, again, from NPR called Embedded, that um, it goes in and does almost undercover type stories one there was a whole series based on the trump administration and just different not necessarily scandals but just issues with what's going on um other ones regarding like undercover police cameras but these are all things that kind of make you think outside of your own little world um another one called how i built this which is kind of similar to what gina's talking about um it was it talks about different entrepreneurs and how they develop their businesses and their brand um they had Kate Spade on it and oh uh, yeah Home Depot and there's I don't know they've had just a ton Southwest on Airlines uh Starbucks and how these places have had very humble beginnings and have been able to just kind of grow their own yeah you know, go back to empire. growing their own brand and their own little empire and it kind of I don't know reinvigorates what you know my own personal goals are to some uh, to some extent um and then you get to the story podcast and they go again, kind of do some undercover story work in these little towns and see the issues really going on with um, kind of like undercover boss. Not quite. It's a little bit more focused than that. Uh, the one I'm thinking of is called S Town, hmm. where they went down and followed his gentleman. That um, you know, he and he almost seemed bipolar, and uh, this reporter just had this um, long relationship with him. Then unfortunately, the guy ended up passing away, and this is getting really depressing now. But um, it was just interesting to see how this community kind of rallied around it and the different perspectives. But anyway, that's been the wonderful thing about podcasts to me is it's really it's a way to get other points of view um, right at your fingertips. Those are some good podcasts. And I actually have not listened to any of them uh, except for the read. Um, and I probably should. And I'll, I'll definitely check them out right now. I just discovered today uh, today one. 
But two others uh, I'm listening to are The Impact Theory and MTR Network is a fun one. Uh, that's a former college friend of ours who who started it. I usually go there for movie reviews and stuff. Oprah's Super Soul Sunday is an episode. And then today, past Chasing Dreams guest, Lovey Ajayi and uh, actress Yvonne Orji just came out with Jesus and Jalof as a podcast. And it's hilarious. I heard about that. I have to download that. I'm it was excited. hilarious. Like, it, And then the thing is, they take it from... Um, a Nigerian perspective, like the first the first episode, they talk about the Nigerian love languages. Right. But as immigrants, as Indians, for us, um, you know, we can relate to a lot of that. And I'm sure others can, too. So if you it, we'll have the links to these podcasts in the show notes, guys, that you can find at the end of the show, we'll talk about that. Um, but guys, check it out. And I love it. So for those who have not been on the show and I just realized, you know, a lot of people haven't met Josh. Um, and technically, Jamie, why don't we talk a little bit about what you guys do? And in terms of is talk about also, is this something you imagined yourself doing? So given that people have met Gina already, technically, let's start with Jamie. OK. Hi, everyone. Um, so I am a director of diversity and inclusion at the Samuel Curtis Johnson College of Business or Graduate School of Management um, at Cornell University. And I did not see myself doing this. I'm an attorney in my pre previous life, and I was looking to make a little bit deeper of an impact. And worlds collided, and here I am in Ithaca, New York, um, doing really fun work. I get to meet a variety of people, um, people who are looking to make their dreams come true, a lot of people with really great passion. And I get to help um, people understand what's going on in the world and, and try to help understand how they can be change agents um, and as well as help underrepresented groups um, really be supported through the MBA process. Is that something you thought you would do though, Jay, uh, at an early age? Nope, not at all. I mean, I always had a, a drive to help people and, and um, you know, been associated with programs that help, um, you know, being first gen in this country, we don't always know where to get where resources are and um, through the Meyerhoff program in our undergrad, I definitely re recognized the need for more underrepresented groups in the sciences. And so I think now in our country, we're realizing a lot of stuff is happening and we can't pretend the stuff isn't happening and definitely didn't see myself being in a position to have a platform where I can help people. Very cool. Gina or Josh, who wants to go? I think Josh should go. All right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Josh. Um, that's going to be really hard to follow, actually. So I'll just uh, kind of start ranting. Um, <laughs> so uh, I and I'm sorry, Gina and myself both are dentists, and we actually work both in the same uh, practice right now. Uh, shout out to Cornerstone Dental. It's a practice that my brother and I initially started up. And um, part of what our goals with the practice are we're trying to elevate dental care and make it a less fearful experience and a very or a quality healthcare experience for people and develop those relationships. Um, we kind of set out to set ourselves apart in that we don't want to be associated or be a type of mill practice where we're just seeing patients and running them through as quickly as possible. We want to try to develop the relationships with our patients and um, give them all of their options for care instead of trying to decide for them what they need. Well, is it, is it something that you always wanted to do? It is. Um, believe it or not, it's been the goal since eighth grade. Um, and it's one of those things that uh, it's been kind of the constant vision for me moving forward that this is where I wanted to eventually get to. Um, and granted, I took some detours along the way just to make sure that this was the right path for me. But um what kind of detours did you take? Because I was actually going to ask, I mean, is that is that something that you always were confident about? Did you ever have doubts? When you're trying to decide what you want to do for your life, you always have doubts. And um, I don't know if you're ever sh absolutely sure that it's the right path for you. But it was one of those things that oh, my life kept on coming back to this path. Um, it really, I would say it started because both of my parents were uh, nurses at uh, some local hospitals growing up. So healthcare is always been around my life, whether it was my parents, friends or, uh, or anything like that. So, um, but 
you know, I was always one of those kids. I was much better working with my hands. Um, and so after kind of talking to my parents and oddly enough, my brother went into a dental lab program. That was one of the first introductions I had to dentistry. That just kind of, I just kind of fell into this path and um, everything was always building up to this. Now, after I got done with undergrad, I went and actually worked a couple uh, different jobs. One was at the visitor center. The other was actually at a FedEx um, facility helping to sort packages. And there was no better motivator than manual labor. I think everybody should do manual labor at least once. Well, it gives you an appreciation for things. Um, I mean, it was a great job. They took great care of me out there. But I was probably two years between finishing my undergrad before going over to dental school. Um, So by the time I was, by the time I started applying again for dental school, I had made the decision that I was definitely ready to get back into it and finish up that part of the journey. Um, So you, you uh, ended up kind of following yourself even throughout. You always came back to it, but Gina, you didn't have a similar experience. No, always thought I wanted to be a medical physician. And I went through my life and I mean, up to college thinking, oh, I want to be a doctor. Uh, And then it ended up being I was a doctor of teeth, (laughs) which is totally perfect. Um, I, I went to grad school after undergrad to get my master's just to study more. And I shadowed a dentist at that time. And I just realized this is exactly what I I've been looking for, but it's taken me so long to find out. Um, and for me, dentistry, actually just like Josh, I'm, I like doing things that are hands-on. I like working with my hands. I like working with patients. So like Josh, um, our, our mom, well, Jamie, me and my mom, She's also a nurse. And so we've also been heavily influenced in healthcare, or I've been heavily influenced in healthcare. And we have a lot of cousins who are physicians and in dentists as well. So I've appreciated both of those things as well. I've also always thought of dentistry as advanced arts and crafts, (laughs) which if you know me, it's perfect for me. So it's just something that, I mean, I've had many struggles with dentistry, but Despite the struggles, I really always, I always come back to it because I just love it that much. Uh, I love the patient care. I like being a patient advocate, but I also, I really just love being able to help patients get out of pain, be able to smile, um, be able to function and use their teeth. It's just, it makes me so happy at the end of the day. So given your professions, all of you interact with people, a variety of people, a variety of ages, gender, uh, ethnicities, you know, across the board, a cu- different careers. When you talk to these guys, because all of you are very personal, I know you've had conversations with other people. Mm-hmm. You don't, you don't just kind of keep to yourself. What is something that you found in these conversations, these stories you hear about people and their dreams? Do you find that they are kind of chasing it that they've kind of given up what's what's the vibe from the perspective you have in the people you interact with so for me I think um the students I encounter are either discovering their dreams so they're they're seeing they maybe know the industry that they're interested in whether it be finance or marketing or tech and they're trying to find what it is that might give them the passion but they have an idea I want to help people I want to um work in the international space and um, talk about bringing more access to electricity or whatever it might be. Um, And they just don't know how to do it. And so the education is maybe their way of kind of figure it out. And so some people just want to kind of be reminded of what they tell you um, their dreams are. And I love being that person to kind of say, Hey, I remember on your first day, this is what you wanted. And now look at you. So I think some people are, are on that journey and some people are, figuring out what it is exactly it is they want to do, but are determined um, that they're there for a reason. Nice. I, I, I mean, for me, that's awesome to hear. I love hearing that. Are you guys seeing that as well, Gina and Josh? I would say it's a good ba- mixed bag of things, um, you know, because we're seeing patients ranging from one year old up to, what, 98? 90, yeah, <laughs> 98. <laughs> I mean, wow. It, 
it really varies. And you know, that 98 year old, I'm, I'm sure she's chased a few of her dreams along the way and she seems mm-hmm. to be very happy. But, um, you know, I think kind of the fun part for us is seeing kids kind of grow up and see them develop their dreams and chase them. And granted, we're still so young that we haven't had a chance to really follow this along too much. But um, I think the one thing that really has stuck out is um, we have had the opportunity to have people come into the office to kind of shadow. And there's one young gentleman who really seems to be interested in actually pursuing a career in dentistry. And he actually came in and worked as part of his high school credits. It's been really good to see him grow and learn and be interested in what we're doing and go on down his own path to, uh, sorry, what am I trying to say? (laughs) Basically going down his own path to a dream that he's also, he's very similar to Josh. He's kind of established at an early age that he wants to be a dentist. Right. But he's putting so much work into it at such a mm-hmm. young age, but you can tell he really enjoys it. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the same manner, Josh's younger brother, I think, mm-hmm. is another example of what we get to see. His Josh's younger brother is a he was trained. Uh, he went to school to be a dental lab technician, but he's also helping us currently as a dental assistant. But every day that he comes in, you can see that this is not just a job for him, it's become his career. So he's very much him and the, and the person that Josh was speaking about, everything is very much about wanting to learn Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not just learn just for the sake of having another skill, but to learn, to be able to apply it to so many things. Mm -hmm. So It's been pretty inspiring. Like seeing them go through it has been inspiring for us because just to see it from a different perspective gets very exciting. And it's been kind of fun as well with, you know, our entire team that we have assembled. It's been interesting or actually it's been fun to have them all come, uh, come on board as part of this. I'll say dream that will Gina and myself and Jacob have all had to try to grow this practice and develop something that I think is quite unique for, at least for our area. Mm hmm. And so you guys are doing this stuff and you're keeping busy nine to fives, essentially, for the most part, eight to five uh, for some of you. And and Jamie, you have hours that extend past nine to five. So what do you do to stay sane? You know, what is it that you do? Because I know you have interests, you have other passions. Do you have time to to do them? Do you make time? Like, what what is that like for you guys? Um, so for me, I enjoy, uh, kind of seeing movies. Um, I love the creativity and, um, you know, I was a big comic book fan. Amy and I collected comic books when we were in high school and to see those things come to life on the big screen is amazing. And the stories, um, more unique stories, books come to life on the screen. I love that stuff. So, um, I tend to see movies. Um, in the theater or on um, Netflix or Amazon Prime. Um, and also just spending time with my friends and catching up and um, hearing what's going on in their lives really kind of just gives me joy. And if I'm not up here in Ithaca or traveling for work, I am home in Maryland. Uh, I'm always a fan of that. <laughs> <laughs> what about you guys? Well, for me, I la- uh, actually been about a year and a half, but I've been big into calligraphy. Uh, Growing up, I've always been very artsy fartsy, uh, big into crafts. And as a kid, I remember my dad bought bought me a calligraphy set. And I used to, and it was more traditional calligraphy. Uh, I've always been big into my handwriting and making sure it's neat and pretty. And uh, last around a year and a half ago, I I kept seeing people doing what they call modern calligraphy or brush lettering. And so my family, you guys and my parents who are awesome, got me an iPad and I started doing calligraphy on the iPad. And then I started doing practice sheets and doing calligraphy just by hand. And it has got, it has just grown. I do it as a stress relief. I do it uh, on random pieces of paper in between patients. Sometimes at my patient notes, I'll write their name in calligraphy. It's just become something for me that's been so much fun. But what I really love is how people react to it. 
uh, a lot of the times when I, when I write something and I will tell you, I'm not, I'm not amazing by any means. Don't, I, don't let her well, say that. No. Meaning I feel like I can grow and I can keep <laughs> learning more. Sure. But we're with Josh. Right. <laughs> I know. Imposter syndrome, man. Yes. Josh, you've got oh, this. Come it's on. real. I'm telling you. you. It is yeah. real. But I, I know that I can grow, but I do love that if I write something out, everyone just gets so excited and it makes, and to a point where they say, oh, I would love something like that. So I've always, I mean, not like I do this every day, but I love making things for people with calligraphy and I have so much support about it because everybody wants me to make it a business. So hopefully I can one day, but I love calligraphy. I would, sometimes I tell Josh when I'm at home that I could just do this all day. Um, if you guys don't believe us, I mean, uh, she has an Instagram love rights co again, it'll be on the show notes page. You should check it out. She's very talented and she's not the only one, Josh. Well, my hobby is to encourage her. I mean, that's really, <laughs> oh all right. You clearly didn't pick up on that. Let's try it again. Josh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Josh? I know what you're saying. Uh, you know, I also like to be humble about this. So, okay. I'll talk for you. No, on the hundredth right. episode of Chasing Dreams, each of my hundred guests got a gift. It had a wood stand with a glass little plaque. Those wooden stands were made by my brother Josh by <laughs> hand. By hand, folks. A hundred. Well, they were by hand. I, I use some tools to cheat and help it along. Okay. Do you want me to keep going, Josh, or you want to talk about your hobby and what you love? All right, I'll jump in here. There you go. No, my uh, hobby is definitely on kind of doing woodworking projects and things like that. Um, it really kind of started out as something that I felt we needed here at the house. And we just had this empty space that was driving me crazy. So I had to make a big old spice rack uh, for the kitchen. So uh, and it just kind of grown from there um, to building a picnic table for our office staff and making our fire pit. And um, I don't know. It's. I can't really say it's a stress relief because sometimes it's much more stressful to go down there, but it's fun to put that creative energy into creating something else. Um, and it's kind of blossomed into, you know, making a uh, pen kit or sorry, making little wooden pens and cutting boards. And I think my favorite part about it is whenever my hobby and Gina's kind of blends together and we uh, can kind of create something uh unique for friends and family. Yeah. You guys have made some beautiful wood art together where you made the wood. Gina's done calligraphy on the wood and it's turned out beautifully. And some of the listeners, um, cause I know my family's listening are recipients of that and are big fans. And that, yes. And that's been, that actually has been a lot of fun and maybe that it stems into why we love dentistry so much, but we just, it's the creativity part of it. And and just being able to make things for yourself. I think a lot of times Josh and I, when we are out and about, uh, we like, I'll see a sign that's written in calligraphy and I'm like, Oh, I can do that. Or Josh will see something and he'll, he'll try to think how to make it out of wood in a different (laughs) way, but maybe a little bit more improved. So it's great like thinking activity as well. Um, it keeps us busy. It's fun. You know, the talent and crafts is part of the passion and probably a dream with Gina and Josh. And for you, relaxing, you know, just finding time for yourself is something you enjoy doing, you know, and you have ideas also that you're working on the side. You know, when people say, I don't have time to chase my dream, you know, time is a big thing for me. How do you respond to that? How would you respond to that? I would say it all really does come down to just making time. And, you know, even if you have to set aside a little bit of time each week i mean start with a week and then grow build it up to making time every other day or every day Uh, it doesn't have to be all at once because if you try to do that in a lot of ways you're kind of destined for failure you start small start with something that's um manageable yeah and get that done and then go on to the next step you know if you try to go talk if you try to go and tackle a huge project right off Mm -hmm. the bat you're just going to end up frustrated and Um, almost disheartened in a lot of ways and not even want to try to proceed with it. I agree. And I think, you know, maybe it's just 30 minutes and you can Uh do that easily. Maybe it's while you're drinking tea or doing something else. You want to multitask on it. Um, I live by the motto that self-care is super important Um, in the work that I do. You know, 
it's always important to hear people's stories. Um, but then you're also hearing sometimes people's struggles and you want to be a witness to that. And that can sometimes be heavy and you need space and you need to take care and make time for yourself. And if you're working, 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 and you don't make a little bit of time for yourself to just paint your nails or, um, you know, get a massage or, you know, low key things like watching something you want to on TV that you've been waiting to watch or read a book or whatever it might be. Take a walk. 30 minutes. It's important. Self-care really helps keep you sane and balanced so you don't end up being resentful for other things. And I think uh, I agree with Jamie, like self-care is very important. Um, Being a little bit selfish to take care of yourself is also very important. Um, And And another thing is when you're doing these hobbies, for me, a lot of it is trying not to compare yourself to others. So for example, on social media, uh, people will post so many things of projects that they've completed in calligraphy or what, or even woodworking and they are just phenomenal. And then for yourself, you think to yourself, oh my goodness, I can never get to that point. Um, they say that there's that line comparison is the thief of joy. So I think knowing or seeing things like that makes a lot of people back down in, from their dream. And, but what they don't realize is that people have had to practice, practice, practice. Um, and they don't show all that part on social media. No, everything's an overnight success. Yes. <laughs> and it's basically, pra- it, I mean, practice makes perfect, but practice makes progress. So I think Ooh. that's like, a, I didn't come up with that, but <laughs> <laughs> that was deep, dude. Yes. Really? Yes. I've it's never heard that. Time, I know. I was like, after this, I'm going to go upstairs and write practice makes progress. (laughs) A lot of people want to have the end result immediately, but I think a lot of it is about the progress and the journey, which sounds so cliche and cheesy, but it's true. But it's also important to take joy in that journey. I mean, this is something my dad told me years ago. And, you know, let's say you want to go out and, you know, for a guy, a lot of times it's getting a brand new car a lot of the joy you get is in that pursuit. And when you finally get the car or boat or whatever it is you're chasing, um, sometimes you're a little sad because there's nothing to chase anymore and you have to find something else. So it's really important to take stock in the journey itself and grow with it in a way. Mm -hmm. That's actually, I mean, all good points, right? Talking about self-care, taking and doing a little bit at a time, uh, a week, a day, whatever it is, you know, even just the smallest thing can go a long way. And even the fact that, you know, th- I mean, all the nuggets here, uh, enjoying the journey, not just the destination. Huge, right? I mean, how often are we so focused on the goal that we forget that it's the journey that makes it desirable? <laughs> and I would also say, you know, imposter syndrome that you think you're a fraud. Why me? Um, I, I, it's a very real thing and it doesn't lend itself to one specific industry or career. And we all feel that way. And I say, why not you? And it just takes one step and you believing in yourself. And if you don't feel like you have that moment where you can believe in yourself, you surround yourself with good people who remind you why you're chasing that dream. Dang, y'all just dropping nuggets left and right. <laughs> Something we see in our field a lot is whenever you go someplace for help, say Facebook, you will have people that will berate you and mm-hmm. um, everyone has crit- an opinion and, and criticize. And you know, I'm, you know, you're on there looking for help, trying to ask for a question to get advice to improve what you're doing. And you're going to come across those people no matter what you're doing. Um, they're going to try to belittle you to raise themselves up, mm-hmm. and you got to realize that they don't matter. And it's hard to remember that sometimes. Um, so you got to you got to have the value in your or believe in yourself enough to push through that and yep. keep trying. Yes, because it's called your dream, not their dream. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's a thing. It really is a thing, guys. Guys, I'm so glad you were able to come on for the 150th. Yay. Thank you for asking. Congratulations. Us. I feel yes. so honored. Right. I- <laughs> Finally got you guys on here. It took forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm trying and trying. So one one th- one last thing. Uh, what is one thing for each of you that you would tell someone chasing their dream to do today? And we'll go Jamie, Gina, Josh. Um, 
write it down and tell someone, even if it's just a thought, because that's the beginning of the first step for getting to the dream. Oh, that's so good. (laughs) It's not a contest. It's not a contest. I would say write it down and tell someone because that's (laughs) that's the first step to their dream. Ah, that's so good, You are such a little sister. (laughs) Yeah, exactly, Josh. (laughs) Gina, do you need Josh to go first? Mm, uh, Yeah. (laughs) Fine. Josh. I would would honestly say take that first step and just start small. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you just, you got to get out there and try at some point. Otherwise, it's just never going to happen. Oh my goodness. That's good too. (laughs) (laughs) There's literally no right answer here. I would also just do research on what you're interested in. There There you go. go. (laughs) Jinx. That's what I would do. Do research and, and, and write, you know, keep a log of it as well. It is very Mm. easy to go on your phone and just look up a ton of stuff and then forget about it later. But write notes and take, you know, screenshots on your phone. I screenshot stuff all the time on my phone and just keep a log of everything you're learning so that a year from now or a year from when you start, you can see the history of your of your research. Bravo. Brava. Wonderfully done, ladies and gents. Thank you. Thank you. you. There you have it, guys. My family, my loved ones, my heart. I am so glad I was able to finally get them all in one virtual room to have those conversations. And I hope you learned something from them because they were just dropping nuggets of wisdom left and right, left and right. But don't worry, you can find it all on the show notes page over at amyj21.com slash episode 150. That's episode 150. If this podcast, if this show, any of the episodes or past guests has helped you And if you feel so moved, please feel free to rate and review us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or whatever platform you listen to. It would mean the world to us. And guys, once again, I have to thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support, your love, and your belief in me and my mission to inspire, educate, and equip people to chase their dreams. Seriously, thank you. All right, guys, that's enough of that mushy stuff. I'm just kidding. Until next time, keep chasing. Thank you so much for listening to Chasing Dreams. Amy would love to connect with you and hear all about your pursuit of chasing your dreams. Connect with her on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram via at Chasing Dreams HQ. Or you can find Amy on Twitter at AmyJ21. That's A-I-M-E-E-J-2-1. Be sure to visit headquarters over at ChasingDreamsHQ.com for more inspiration, motivation, and resources to help with your own dream chase. We hope you'll join Amy next week. And until then, keep chasing.